assalamu alaikum everyone welcome to the course of thermodynamics me 112 i am dr mohammad uzair working as assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering for this course we have basically divided the whole class of ap mechanical into two section now the section a b and c are merged and named as section 1 or section a while the section b e and f are merged and named as section 2 or section b i am going to teach the section a while the dr usman will teach section b so in the start of the course we have the course learning outcomes the clos so here you can see we have three clos for this course the clo 1 is about to discuss the fundamentals of the thermodynamics the difference between working substances and techniques to evaluate and plot state characteristics for different thermodynamic processes the clo 2 is about apply apply the laws of the thermodynamics to open and close systems while the clo 3 is to analyze the performance and working of different power and perturbation cycles this is all about the course content we have to study all of these you can read from here or as well as this is provided on the departmental website so if you are interested to read this one the course contents you can check either from the website or from the slides that i will provide you the recommend recommended books for this course i am going to recommend the thermodynamics and engineering approach by unis sengel while for the reference books we have the thermodynamics by mcconkey and we have the fundamental of engineering thermodynamics by moran and spiro but i will recommend you to only focus on the first one which is the thermodynamics by sengel and balls the clo assessment mechanism as you know for this course we have 100 marks out of 100 marks the 60 marks for the final exams while the remaining 40 marks will be given to you during the semester in the form of either quizzes assignments and mid term we will discuss this later so the basic introduction and the concepts as you know we are going to study thermodynamics so first question is what is thermodynamics so the answer for this question is the science of the energy is called the thermodynamics so if you going to recall your memory the energy is basically the ability to cause changes so whenever you have to produce the change you need the energy the thermodynamics is basically the combination of two different words these words are basically from the greek language the first one is the therm which means the heat or the energy the second one is the dynamics or the power so basically in this course we have to study the heat and the power conversion basically we will check how we can produce the heat and how we can generate the power with the help of the heat so here we have some basic conservation of the energy principle for any interaction the energy can change from one form to another form but the total amount of the energy remains constant or in other words the energy cannot be created or destroyed for example if you can see here we have a stone here at the top of the hill right now this stone is in the state of rest so we have the kinetic energy equal to 0 while the potential energy is equal to 10 units so overall energy is equal to 10 plus 0 so 10 units 
but if we are going to drop this stone from here to downside the kinetic energy will increase due to the motion of this stone and the potential energy will decrease due to the reduction in the height so you can see here we have new potential energy which is 7 unit and we have the kinetic we have the kinetic energy of the 3 unit but overall sum is equal to 10 units 7 plus 3 is 10 while in the initial case we had the 10 unit so energy cannot be destroyed but you can shift from one form to other form as well so energy can be transferred from one form to another form but you cannot destroy it so here the energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only changes forms it can only change forms this is also known as the first law of thermodynamics so thermodynamics first law and the law of conservation law of conservation of energy are basically same thing so here you can see the different applications areas of the uh, of the thermodynamics so we have the power power plants to produce electricity we have the aircraft spacecraft cars engines to produce the power with the help of fuels basically in these cases you will burn the fuel you will generate the heat and ultimately the heat will transfer to the power here we have the refrigeration system again here we are basically dealing with the energy interaction the heat is going from one form to another form here you can see the solar and water heater system the boats the air condition system the wind turbines even any type of the renewable energy human body in all these cases we are basically using the thermodynamics concept in the real life we have only two things one is the energy and the second one is the mass so whenever there is the interaction of the energy there will be use of thermodynamics so thermodynamics is basically the basic basic need of the life for any course if you're going to study you should know about the dimensions and the units so what is the dimension dimension is basically any physical quantity so any physical quantity can be either mass either temperature either length but whenever we have the dimension there should be a unit as well so unit is going to basically define the magnitude magnitude of that dimension is called the unit we have some basic fundamentals dimension or the primary dimensions and we have some secondary or drive dimension as well if you remember you have already studied, studied the seven fundamental or primary dimensions these are the length mass time temperature electric current amount of light and the amount of matter so we have seven basic primary dimensions and then we have the drive dimensions like the area volume if we're talking about the area so area is basically the combination of the length and the length so length square or the meter square so it's basically combination of same primary dimension but in the top of multiplication the volume is again meter cube so it is derived from the length so whenever we have to study the dimension and the units we have to basically check the systems we have two different system for the magnitudes we have the SI system and we have the British system for this course we will study only the SI system and you should know about these, uh, these terms as well so you can see here we have standard prefix in the SI systems we can use the nano macro 
a micro, milli, centi, deci, deca, hecto, kilo, mega, giga, and so on. So we have the standard prefix, and normally we use the kilo, mega, giga, and even centi, milli, and micro. So you should know about the SI system and the CI system. So we will study only the SI system for this course. So here we have some English, SI and the English unit conversion. Normally, for this course, we will focus on the SI system, but you should know how to convert the English unit into SI system and how to convert the SI system into English unit. So they are basic conversion system. So we have some basic conversions and the different formulas are available to convert from the SI to corresponding English system. Here you can see again, if you can see this lady, so this lady is basically weighing around 150 kilogram for on the earth. But if you can remember the basic formula for weight is mg and g is the acceleration due to gravity. So this gravitational acceleration is going to change from space to space. If you are on the earth, the value of g is 9.8. But if you're going to move to the sun or sorry, uh, to the moon, if you're going to sun, then uh, you will find different G. But on the moon, it's about one fourth of the gravity as we can feel on the earth. So on the moon, the weight will be around 25 uh, pound of force, which is very less. So it's been if you are overweight, so basically you are not overweight, but you are in the wrong planet so if you can move to moon then you will be slim so here you should know about how we can convert the basic terms and basic units from SI to English system and from English to SI system moving further here we have a typical mesh if you are going to burn a mesh stick it will generate about one BTU or one kilojoule of the energy. So BTU, one BTU or one kilojoule is almost equal. Then we have the dimensional homogeneity. If we have any equation, if we have the any equation, then remember that the both sides will have the same unit and you have to add the same unit you cannot add the apple with the mango or mango with the apple so every time in an equation must have the same unit otherwise you cannot add or subtract or multiply so it's better to check the dimensions before going to start or to solve any question so this is all about the previous terms now System and the control volume. I think you have already studied these things as well in uh, the chemistry of your second year. So as a revision, the system is basically any quantity of the matter or region in the space chosen for the study. When we have to deal with the thermodynamics, there is an interaction between the energy. So the energy will shift from one form to another form. So we should know what is the system or we should know what the quantity of the matter or what space or what region we are going to study. So any study, sorry, any quantity of the matter or the region that we have to study is called the system while the remaining portion will called the surrounding. So we have the system and we have the surrounding and the space or the line which will distinguish between uh, the system and surrounding is called the boundary. So boundary is a real or imaginary surface that separates the system from its surrounding. The, uh, the boundary of the system can be fixed or movable. Here 
we have a system. So if we are going to study this one, so this is our, uh, this is the system while the remaining portion will be surrounding and the line that is going to separate the surrounding with the system is called boundary. So we have the system surrounding and boundary. Systems may be considered to be closed or open. We have the closed system, we have the open system. So closed system, a fixed amount of mass, a fixed amount of mass and no mass can cross its boundary. For the closed system, if you can see here, we have two different systems. This is a closed system. We have piston cylinder device. So you can see here it is completely closed and there is no mass coming in or going out. But energy can go in and come out. So energy interaction is there but there is no mass in, mass out. So this is an example of closed system. Here you can see we have a gas and we are going to heat this one. So in this case, right now the volume is 1 meter cube and we have the mass of 2 kg. But when we are going to heat the system, mass will remain constant because there is no space to go out. But the volume will change due to this heat. So now the new volume is 3 meter cube while the mass is same. So with the, with the addition of this mass, uh, sorry, uh, with the addition of this heat, the mass is remain constant, but the volume is changed. So this is an example of closed system. Energy is going in, but the mass is remain constant. During this process, as the mass is going to remain constant, so it is also called as control mass. So closed system is also known as control mass. We have another type which is called the open system, a properly selected region in the space. In this system, the energy will go in, the energy will go out as well as the mass is also allowed to come in and go out. This is the basic example of your, uh, the installed geyser in your home. So you can see here the water is coming from here going in to this geyser. The energy will transfer and the temperature of this water will increase and then it will go out. So we have mass in, mass out and the energy in out as well. So we have the mass in, mass out, energy in, energy out and it is called as open system. In most cases, the volume will remain constant. So it is also termed as control volume. In the last case, it was control mass. Now here we have the control volume for the open system. So in the open system, we will have mass in, mass out, energy in, energy out. So we have another example here. So you can see here we have the nozzle. In this case, the mass will come from here. It will go out from here, in and out. And the energy transfer will occur in this region. So this is our control volume. Again here, we have mass in and there is no mass out. But still because there is mass in, so this is called open system. Remember, it is not necessary that the energy in and energy out is occurring at all the time. But there is the possibility of the energy transfer. So energy in or the energy out doesn't mean that every time you can find the energy in and energy out. Energy in and energy out will occur when it is necessary. So we have the open system, we have closed system. So whenever we have the systems, 
we have to study something because in the system it is defined as the region where you are going to check something so what you have to check so whenever you are going to check anything it is called property so property is basically any characteristic of the system so any characteristic of the system is called property and during inspection you have to check the properties of the system the property can be either mass pressure temperature volume or anything else so basically some familiar properties are pressure temperature volume mass we have different type of properties but the properties can be classified as the intensive or extensive properties the intensive properties are properties that are independent of the size of the system so intensive properties that are independent of the mass or the size of the system let's suppose we have we have the temperature of this room so the temperature is around 24 degrees celsius but if we are going to uh, like decrease this uh, room decrease the size of this room the temperature remains constant because it is independent of the independent of the mass of the system it doesn't depend so the temperature is basically intensive property same similarly the pressure and densities are also inten uh, intensive properties while the extensive properties are the properties that basically depend on the size or the mass or the quantity so mass itself is the extensive property so we have the intensive property we have the extensive properties so you can see here mass volume temperature pressure and density but when we are going to change the size if we are going to split this space into two so mass will be half volume will be half so these are the extensive properties but temperature pressure and density will remain constant so temperature of this one temperature of this region and temperature of this region so temperature is same because it is not dependent on the mass pressure is same density is same because they are independent of mass so pressure temperature density they are all intensive property while the mass volume they are extensive property sometimes we also study another term which is called the specific properties we normally divide the extensive the extensive property by mass so extensive property per unit mass is called specific property in thermodynamics you will study a lot of about the specific properties we will use the specific properties so specific property is simply the mass sorry uh, the property divided by the mass now here uh, we have an approach which is called the continuum this approach is necessary to understand the basic concept if we are talking about the gases or liquids or solids so we know we know that they are all made of electrons in the case of uh, gases the electrons are separated or they are moving at a distance so basically when we are talking about the continuum approach so what we do matter is made of the atoms they are widely spaced in the gas phase gas phase yet it is very convenient to disregard it is very convenient to disregard the atomic nature of the substance and view it as a continuous as a continuous homogeneous matter with no holes remember we have to deal the gas phase and we will treat the gas phase as there is no hole we will deal gas as homogeneous continuous matter so here you can see we have the gases molecule and we have the space between this molecule but despite the relatively large gas between molecules 
a substance can be treated treated as continuum because of the very large number of the molecules even in an extremely small volume so remember that we will treat gas phase as homogeneous and continuous matter now after continuum we are going to discuss about basic properties you know about the mass the mass is the uh, like simply what is mass mass is the amount of the matter and normally it is termed uh, it is uh, the dimension of the mass is kilogram we normally define in term of kilogram the sh system is kilogram kg we know about the volume simply the space occupied by the substance is called the volume in si system the unit is meter cube then we have the density density is simply the ratio of the mass and volume density is termed as the ratio of mass and volume and simply kilogram per meter cube we have another term which is called the specific gravity it is also termed as the relative density as well and you have already i think i and you have already performed uh, some rd bottle test in your chemistry lab in ninth class i think or in physics in matrix so rd bottles are there so specific gravity is simply the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of some standard substance at a specified temperature usually normally we take uh, water at 400 degrees celsius uh, sorry 4 degrees celsius and the density at 4 degree celsius is 1000 kilogram per meter cube so we have the density of the water equal to 1000 kilogram per meter cube so what is specific gravity is simply the ratio of the density of the substance divided by density of the water in few cases uh, we have the density of the different liquid and gases more than uh, like in the term of uh, uh, 10 power 6 10 power 3 10 power 4 so instead of going to write the density when normally define the specific gravities like for the mercury the density of the mercury is around 13600 13600 kg per meter cube but if we if we are going to write the specific gra gravity so it will be simply 13.6 so the specific gravity of the mercury is 13.6 while the density is 13600 so it is easy to write the specific gravity rather than the density we have one more term which is called the specific volume as i already told you the specific term means the property divided by mass so here what is specific volume so specific volume is the property which is volume divided by mass so we we have v over m here remember one thing whenever we will have the specific property then we will use the small letter for the specific property we will always use the small letter so we have small v here so it will show a specific volume so we have v over m here if you see for the density we have mass over volume for the vo uh, specific volume we have volume over ma mass so it's been density and specific volume are basically reciprocal to each other so v is equal to 1 upon rho so volume is basically reciprocal to density or the density is reciprocal to volume so you have to remember these things so here if we have the volume of 12 meter cube and mass of 3 kg so density will be simply mass divided by volume which is 3 divided by 12 and you will get 0.25 kg per meter cube while the specific volume is the reciprocal of density so it's simply 1 divided by 0.25 and you will get 4 or you can get specific volume by dividing volume by mass so 12 divided by 3 you will get 4 so specific property is simply the property divided by mass while the density and the specific volume are reciprocal to each other now 
the density is basically function of temperature and it will change if you are going to change the temperature but the thing is from where we can get the values of density so here i am going to provide a table and you can see the specific gravity of some substance at 20 degree celsius and one atmosphere so we have the water blood sea water gasoline and different uh, substance and the sg is given the specific gravity is given the specific gravity of the water is 1 because you know the specific gravity is the ratio of the substance divided by the, the density of the water so if the substance is water so density will be 1000 divided by the density of water which is 1000 so you will get 1000 divided by 1000 you will get specific gravity of 1 so we have the water having specific gravity of the 1 but the sea water sea water the specific gravity is different this is 1.025 so it means the density of the sea water is more than the density of the water now at the end we can see the density of the air this is specific gravity so if you will uh, if you have to find the density so you simply if you know what is specific gravity then you have to simply multiply with the density of water and you can get the density so for the air the specific gravity is 0 0.001204 so when you are going to multiply with the thousand you will get 0 0.1204 kilogram per meter cube so density of the air is very very low uh, sorry you will get around uh, 1.2 so the density of the air will be 1.2 when you will multiply this one with thousand you will get around 1.2 so density of the air is around 1.2 kilogram per meter cube so we have density we have specific gravity we have specific volume and then we have one more term this term is called specific weight here remember we have two different terms in the whole thermodynamics where we are using the word of specific the first one is this one the specific gravity the second one is specific weight except these two terms the specific property is always the property divided by mass but for the specific gravity and the specific weight we are not going to divide these properties by mass rather we will divide by density and in this case we will divide with the volume if you are going to divide the specific weight like if you are going to divide the weight by mass then at the end you will get the value of gravitational due to uh, gravitational acceleration the acceleration due to gravity because weight is mg divided by m so ultimately you will get the value of g which is not correct so for the specific weight we are going to divide the weight by the volume so for the specific weight uh, we normally use the uh, we normally use uh, gamma and gamma is equal to weight divided by volume so weight is mg divided by volume so mass divided by volume is equal to density while we have the g so ultimately at the end you will get this formula that the specific weight is equal to rho g so specific weight is equal to rho g and the unit is newton per meter cube because weight divided by volume so we have weight divided by volume so we have newton per meter cube so we have density specific volume specific gravity and specific weight and you should know about mass and the volume now next we have simple question here find the specific gravity of the mercury the sg of the mercury if the specific weight of the mercury is 133 kilo newton per meter cube at 20 degrees celsius at 20 degrees celsius the temperature is mandatory to mention because if you are going to change the temperature then the value of, of the specific weight or the value of the density will change now in this case you can see that this, uh, the specific weight is given and you have to find the specific gravity so since we know 
the specific weight is is equal to density times the g so if we have to find out the value of rho so we can rewrite the equation so density will be specific weight divided by g so value of gamma is given which is 133 and then it is kilo remember it is kilo so 10 power 3 divided by 9.81 and you will get the value for the density if you know the value of the density then the specific gravity is easy you can easily find out the specific gravity the formula is the density divided by the density of the water so you know what is the density you can get the density value from here and then you have to divide by the density of the water so ultimately you will get 13.6 density of density of the water is 1000 so the density from here divided by 1000 you will get 13.6 so the density of sorry the specific gravity of the mercury will be 13.6 at 20 degree celsius now state and equilibrium normally when we are talking about the thermodynamics in order to check the property we have to define a state what is state state is defined as a set of fixed property a state of fixed properties a state of fixed properties in any case if any property is going to change then you will get a new state you can see here we have piston cylinder device we have mass of 2 kg the temperature is 20 degrees celsius while initial volume is 1.5 meter cube if the properties remains constant if the properties remains constant that then it is called a state right now this is state number one now in any case if any property you can check here the volume is changed while mass and temperature is same the volume is changed from 1.5 to 2.5 now because the property is changed so state is also changed we have a new state which is called a state number two now this state will remain as a state until these properties are fixed by any chance if any property is going to change then the state will change so right now we have two different states of our system only volume is changed now the problem is for uh, for any state how we can define or which property we are going to check to define a state for this case for this uh, portion we have to define another term which is called equilibrium normally thermodynamics deal with the equilibrium states so what is equilibrium equilibrium is basically a state of balance and we have four different types of equilibrium for our study or for any, for any state we have four types of equilibrium the first equilibrium is the thermal equilibrium the thermal equilibrium is basically if the temperature is the same throughout the entire system if the temperature of the system remains constant that is called that the state is in thermal equilibrium second one is the phase equilibrium sorry mechanical equilibrium if there is no change in the pressure at any point of the system with time then it is called the mechanical equilibrium so it's been the pressure remains constant throughout the system to maintain a state we have third one which is called the phase equilibrium if any phase sorry if any system involves more than one phase and when the mass of each phase reaches an equilibrium level and stay, stays there then it is called the phase equilibrium means let's suppose if we have a 
glass of water and ice glass of water and ice we have two different phases we have solid one we have liquid so state will be there if the mass of the ice and the mass of the water remains constant the mass of the ice and the mass of the water remains constant then it will be a state but if the mass of the ice is going to decrease then we have a new state so for any state you have to maintain the mass of all the phases present in the system now we have the last phase as uh, last equilibrium which is called the chemical equilibrium if the chemical composition of a system doesn't change with time that is no chemical reaction occur like in the previous example we have the water and the ice in the glass so here we have the chemical formula of h2o for ice and the water but in any case if there is a chemical reaction if we have different phases and we are going to, and there is a chemical reaction then we will have we will uh, we will not be able to maintain the chemical chemical equilibrium in order to maintain the chemical equilibrium there shouldn't be any chemical reaction we have to avoid any chemical reaction so for any system or for any state to maintain all these equilibrium should be fulfilled we should have the thermal equilibrium we should have the mechanical equilibrium we should have the phase equilibrium and we should have the chemical equilibrium in any case if any equilibrium is disturbed then a state will change the state will maintain if all these four equilibriums will be maintained now here we have the state postul uh, postulates in order to define the state we should know some properties so the number of properties required to fix the state of a system is given by the state postulate so what is the state postulate simply it is the the state of a simple compressible system is completely specified by two independent intensive properties the state of simple compressible system so first thing is what is simple compressible system so what is simple compressible system any system that doesn't involve any electrical magnetic gravitational motion and surface tension effect so in the simple compressible system we don't have we don't have any electrical magnetic gravitational motion and the surface tension effects so for any simple compressible system we need two independent intensive properties two independent intensive properties so we have two terms the one is the independent and one is the intensive intensive is already the independent of mass while independent is that the properties the required properties are not dependent on each other like uh, for the pressure and temperature or mass if you are going to boil the water so in the liquid phase if you are going to heat the water so water temperature will change and uh, you can see the water temperature will increase from uh, room temperature to the 100 degrees celsius where the boiling rate will occur at 100 degrees celsius when the boiling will start during the phase change the temperature doesn't change now if you are going to deal with the phase change system and you are going to select the temperature then the temperature is not independent property because the temperature will change sorry uh, the temperature will not change during the phase change system and it will depend on the pressure so for the one atm or one atmosphere pressure the water will boil at 100 degrees celsius so at the 100 degrees celsius during phase change the temperature will be 100 so during phase change process the temperature is 100 so you cannot select the temperature as the independent property 
during phase change process. So remember, you have to select independent and intensive properties, and you need only two properties. Is completely specified by two properties. So you need only two properties to define the system. So here, only two properties. If you know the temperature and volume, then you can easily find out the remaining properties. 